Hello, I'm Hugh Milton and I'm here to talk to you about medieval woodworking, the Hull and East Riding Museum's Festival of Archaeology. I'd just like to talk initially about the kind of woodwork that you'd see in the medieval countryside and cities. To start with you have the buildings. A lot of buildings were made with timber frames or for roofing you needed the work of the carpenter, people like me. But also you had other specialists. You had shipbuilders who had their own particular tools and skills to build the ships that made Hull such a good port. There's also people with more down-to-earth jobs, something I'll be talking about a bit later. The people who made the furniture for the houses. So, for example, the food cupboards, um, small chests, more decorative carved pieces for churches and that kind of thing. And also, sometimes, at its most simplest level, the tools the carpenters would use themselves. So there's a ruler based on one found on the Mary Road. Here's a workbench. If I talk initially about the kind of workbenches that you would have expected to have seen in medieval workshops, there's a couple here. The first one I'll show you, I'll just move that. This, a lot of people, you may hear a lot of people talk about Roman workbenches. Um, it's a style of workbench which first archaeological evidence is shown in Pompeii in Italy where there are images on a wall painting of a carpenter using a bench like this to hold his work while he works beside it on a stool. And if you've ever wondered why it's called a workbench, well, the answer's here to show. At its simplest, to hold the work, I've got a piece of carving held very tight, you can see by pulling it I've brought it loose. A piece of carving, if I wanted to work on that, I've got pegs and then tapered wedges and that holds the work and you just tap the wedges in place and it holds the work solid. Now this style of bench although we know it's, it was certainly around in the Roman period, was also still being used in the, in the Middle Ages. We know that because of images. Um, we're very lucky as carpenters, looking back at the history, because a lot of the images relate to the Bible and the work of Jesus, who was born to Joseph, who was a carpenter. So he's often shown using the tools. Now the tools are normally those related to the period of the person doing the stained glass window or the carving. So we can see the progression of tools through history through their use in art. A more modern style of work bench, and this is one based on a carving from around 1500, is this one. Now, it had a whole lot of holes in, which shown in the picture, which I thought that's for pegs and wedges like that. What I didn't know was why there were also holes going up the legs. And that led me on to learning about these. The technical term is a bench hold fast. There's another one here. And if I just put that in place on the piece of work, I've got a piece of wood I'm carving at the moment here. And I always tell people it's magic. Tap it home and it's so strong a hold you can lift the workbench with it. And using that you can work on the piece of work that you want 
you can put them in up the legs as well if you want to work on a piece of work like that. So this is based on a carving from 1500 and so we know that they were in use at that point. Now moving on a bit, tools. Some of the tools you might be familiar with, these are shown in medieval illustrations and also on carvings and stained glass window and this still this kind of saw was still being made in the 1950s this is one i made myself based on medieval images but they carry on other saws look sort of familiar this is based on an image of building of the ark the actual painting shows not men building an ark, but men building a timber framed house. But that's a copy made by a skilled person for me. There's two kinds of tools that you see. There's the ones in the workbenches and the ones that you'd more likely find used by journeymen who would be contractors sometimes hired for the day or jour which is the French for day and they'd have had sometimes more basic tools that's just in the right hands of the right people this is an auger bit comes in two pieces fits in a nice tool bag and using that you can use it to drill holes it's quite simple but it works Here's a copy of a medieval axe. Again, nice, portable. You'll notice it differs from modern axes just from how little metal is used. Nowadays, we're a bit profligate with our use of metal. In those days, it was worth not quite a king's ransom, but a lot of money. So you, you don't see bigger axes unless you need a big axe coming in in the medieval era, they tend to come in later on as the Industrial Revolution takes hold. So that's the kind of journeyman's tool. I'll show you one other one used by a lot of countrymen. This is called a twibill. Because you wanted it portable, there's two tools in one here. There's a hooking knife, and a sharp bladed knife and that was made for used for making smaller mortise holes in pieces of work such as if you're making sheep hurdles so they're the tools that you'd more likely see used by the journeyman if you're doing carpentry for example for example carving you'd more likely find a tool chest in a workshop and you see some lovely images of medieval workshops. And here's some tools. For example, there's finds of tools like this through archaeology. This one was probably made in 1900, but there's an almost identical one in a museum in Wales that is from the Roman period. Others are copies of the kind of tools that you'd have seen medieval wood carvers and carpenters using. If I just put them to one side, I'll talk about measuring and marking. I showed you that earlier. So if I wanted to mark out a bit of woodworking, I could use not a pencil, I could use lead or charcoal or maybe chalk. Other marking tools are the plumb bob if I'm working in the buildings.
and then you get tools such as compasses. Now on here I've got a piece of carving marked out. Now if we look close, more closely at the piece of work that I have on the workbench, you can see it's a three panel carving. Um, that's the nearly finished state of the carving. That's showing the carving just started and the marking out. And here I have a panel so I can show you how they'd have come to that design on this. I'll just show you briefly. First, you need to find the centre point. And by using a rule and a piece of charcoal or other marking equipment, You measure them from the corners and then you can either at a crudest level have a piece of string and a bit of charcoal and measuring out that distance there from the previous piece of work. you can draw an arc and that will give you that centre line there on that piece. Alternatively, there's compasses. These ones probably date from around 1700, but uh, they do last. And you can take that measurement there from the previous piece, or if you know the centre point, if you want to know the centre point, you can work it out from the ruler. And then, let's get this right. And then you can scribe a line. Now it looks quite brutal, but in a lot of buildings and furniture, you can still see the scribed lines the little telltale marks which shows how they marked out the work and that'll mean that eventually you can come to a lovely piece of marking out. That then means I can start to carve the next piece of this panel. Now the first bit I've already done is going down to the base level there. So by just taking the chisel, you can work round like that, as I've done there. And then you just need to take out the depth that you're working to. Now, modern technology and the accuracy of measurement and the need for precision we now have in a lot of parts of the world people would get worried that they all ended up exactly the same. Now, the more experienced you get, the more accurate you can become just by rule of thumb. But you can see variations if you look at original medieval furniture in museums and places like that. You can see that it's not precision engineering, it's decorative. And if it looks right, it is right. There's then parts on the carving, like here, where you mark out, again, with a mallet, but you don't want it too deep all the way, because that cuts shallow, that cuts deep. And then you start working from the shallow end. And you just start working in and with a lot of patience and a fair deal of time you can start making progress and eventually you end up with something that looks more like that. Now again something we worry about is the polished finish nowadays and people say well what did you do for sandpaper? Well, 
one of the ways is to use a scraper. Now, those who hate seeing abused tools look away now. But if I want to make that nice and smooth, I can use a chisel or any other sharp object to just scrape away till I get rid of all the work lines. And over time, again with patience, you can do that. Or you could use a knife to clean up the curved edges along there. Eventually, the intention is that that'll be the carved front for a chest, much like this box behind in the background. That bit is what I'm carving here. So this will be a higher status box that hopefully the wealthy will come along and pity this poor carpenter and make him wealthy. Thank you for coming to visit our online festival and we hope you've enjoyed watching this video of some of my work and some of the work of the medieval craftsmen. Thank you.